Hi, it's Avery. Today, we're going to be talking about this beautiful camera that I have right here. This thing is my baby, so I'm just... What? Hardy har har, that was a joke. With all the lights and everything, I've decided that removing my chair and just standing back here is a lot more productive, but the problem with that is I'm like standing back here and it's very awkward. Because I want the mic to be closer to my face. In my last video, we talked about how I got a new camera and it is very nice. I'm trying to tell, show people how nice you are and you don't want to focus on my hand. The camera I got is the Panasonic Luminix G9 and um, I just really wanted to talk about it and sort of like say how impressed I am with it because it's a really nice camera. And um, I'm glad I'm impressed because, like I said, I paid an arm and a leg for this thing. I've sunk quite a lot of money into this channel, and I'm not getting it back anytime soon, so we might as well go big. Throughout my YouTube career, I've had quite a few different cameras. Uh, first camera I used was this one. This is a Sony Bloggy, which, as you can see, is pretty beat up. It, I mean, it still records fine today. Stabilization is pretty good, too. Um, then after that, I got a Yi, a Yi M1, I think it's called. And that was my first venture into 4K video recording, which I am a big fan of, and I'm not sure why that is. My monitor doesn't play back 4K. What? What's this dot on my hand? I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this, but it, it all sort of came from a point of like, once I film in 4K, I only want to go up from there quality-wise. I have like a sort of fixation. After the Yi M1, I got the, the last camera I had, Panasonic G7, which was a very nice camera, but it had one problem, one thing I didn't like. Actually, no, it didn't really have a problem. The point is it doesn't shoot 4K 60, and for years, or maybe like a year or something, I've published my videos in 4K60. Why? When I used to make videos that didn't involve a camera where it would just be like uh, an After Effects animation or something, I could produce content that is as ever high of quality I want, basically. It would just add on to the render time because, you know, you're not forced to just use the quality your camera has. And since I have this fixation on not going down in quality, I just decided to publish in 4K60 anyways. In defense of myself, you know, I wasn't just doing it to be able to say, oh, my videos are published in 4K 60 FPS. I was doing it because another benefit of publishing 60 FPS is that your video is in a higher bit rate. It's a lot clearer, basically. I guess that's what it translates to. It's noticeably nicer. I, I, I should back up here a little bit. As you can see, this video is going to be rather just me. It's going to be me rambling on about this camera. I have some funner videos coming up soon. So if you'd like to just stay tuned for that, that's totally fine. This is more of me just being a nerd. As you can imagine though, I've really wanted to produce videos in 4K 60 FPS. Now, what does that mean? 4K is four times the resolution of HD. 60 FPS is two times the normal frame rate of video. So frame rate is just the amount of frames that are taken in a video. So if you take double the amount of frames, movement inside of your video is gonna appear a lot smoother, a lot more lifelike. And that sounds very nice to me. <laughs> I've also said in the past it's a good a future proofing thing in that my videos will still be considered high quality quite a while from now. I'm not sure if that's really a good thing though because if my videos are re still relevant in a couple years I could regret that. I don't know. The problem is 4K 60 FPS is not really something that you find. It's not standard at all. So the first like consumer camera to really come out with 4K 60 is this camera the action camera. I immediately bought it because I was like, wow, this is great. I just realized that this has just been me rambling about resolutions for like five minutes. Not sure if this is a good video idea, but I guess we're uh, too late to turn back now. So this camera, the camera that this video is about, it's the G9 does 4K 60 FPS, 6K photos. It also has an 80 megapixel picture mode. What happens there is it moves the sensor around and takes a bunch of pictures and stitches them together to create an 80 megapixel picture. Like the iPhone 8, I think, had like a 12 megapixel camera. So that sort of really puts into perspective how much 80 megapixels is. Another thing that's really nice about this camera is it's supposed to have like the best stabilization in the business. Really nice, really smooth five axis stabilization. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. I am infamous for my very shaky 
shaky, you know, because my first camera that I really used to make these videos with on the Yi M1, it didn't have any stabilization in it. So it was super shaky, super disorienting. Boy, oh boy, we don't have that problem now, do we? I'll, I'll show you. Let's actually, let's talk about that. This camera is marketed as a stills camera, like a, a camera to take pictures on. The stabilization is so nice, I figured this would be perfect for me. And since it does do the 4K60, all my boxes are checked. So if I, if I take the camera off my tripod here, it's really smooth. It's just in general, it's nice, it's smooth. We don't have any crazy shakes or anything. It's all looking very good. It has this mode on it that I was looking at earlier, which completely blew my mind. It's supposed to emulate a tripod. So let's say you're out shooting pictures. You're shooting pictures somewhere and you don't have a tripod, but you want to make a really stable video. I don't know, maybe I'm just infatuated about this camera, but seriously, let me show you guys. In order to compare this properly, I'm just going to show this camera on a tripod and then I'm going to show this this mode. Here I am using the tripod. So as you can see, it's very still. There's some slight shakes. Just kidding. This is the tripod emulation mode thing I was talking about. It's using optical stabilization to try to keep the shot as still as possible. And I'm using like my shaky hands, dude. So this is what the camera looks like without stabilization. And as you can see, I mean, it's not bad because I have a handheld rig that it's attached to, but it's very shaky. And that's the classic Avery Miller shakes. But once you have that stabilization on, those shakes are gone and it's really impressive. Once you enable that um, tripod emulation mode or whatever I called it earlier, it's really incredible. When I first saw that, it was so still that I thought the camera had froze, like it had just froze up. I, I, it's incredible. Welcome to Thoughts from Avery Time. This is the time when I just randomly go off on a ramble in the middle of this video. It feels really weird to me to be making a video that's like, be reviewing something. It just seems so weird. Do you guys, what do you guys think about this? I'm, I I don't plan to become like an unboxing channel or something, but anyway, I mean, let's let's talk about some more stuff about this camera. This 80 megapixel mode, um, 80 megapixels is a lot of pixels. A megapixel is just a million pixels. So if you have 80 megapixels, that means it's 80 million pixels inside the image. This camera, is very attractive. How do, why don't we just say that? Earlier, I tweeted about this picture I took of my cactus, 80 megapixels, here it is. Now, just to put this into scale, I think, let's say you're watching this video in 1080p. If you crop in to 1080p on this picture, what does it look like? It looks like this. If you're watching in 4K, this is what the 4K looks like. And as you can see, I mean, it's, it's a big picture. It doesn't have like an 80 megapixel sensor or something. I'm not ABM HD or something, but it's like the best I got. A thing I mentioned earlier is that it takes 6K pictures. Now, what does that mean? So it takes pictures in 6K, but the thing they've been touting about it, 30 6K pictures per second. So it has like a burst mode. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. So if you're familiar with video, typically the standard for frames per second in a video is 25 to 30. I was like, you know, it's almost like you're taking a 6K video really. And I was looking into it and guess what? It also records audio when you do the burst mode and it also exports it as a video file, as an MP4. That's it literally takes 6K video and they just, for some reason, they decided to not talk about it. It's literally just a 6K video file. I think the reason they don't say, hey, this camera can shoot in 6K is because it's four by three. It's a four by three aspect ratio. It's like a square. It's a version of 6K. Why don't we say that? I mean, it is 6K. Geez, I am such a nerd. I'm sorry, guys. For your viewing pleasure, the highest resolution video I have ever taken in my entire life, 6K. Of course, it's downscaled to 4K, but just shush, watch it. Hello. Wow, wasn't that amazing? It's three seconds long because I just wanted to do a test, you know? That itself is like almost 100 megabytes. That's quite a lot, honestly. I mean, that's the most of the features I wanted to go over with with this camera. Stabilization, really fantastic. There's some other stuff that my last camera didn't have that you just sort of get by going to a professional level camera, for instance. What in the world was that? For instance, you have a headphone jack on this, um, two SD card slots. There's also a little LCD screen on the top of the camera, which is pretty interesting. My main complaints at this point, one, earlier I went outside to take some pictures of the sunset to try to show off off this camera. I tried to do one of those 80 megapixel stills. I was thinking I could try to pull it off handheld because of the stabilization on the camera, but I don't think it works like that because it's moving the camera sensor in order to get those 80 megapixels. So I don't think that's stabilized. I think it's using the motors it would normally use to stabilize it to move the sensor. So that is something you should note. 
I mean, but it's not really that big of a deal. You just get a tripod. I've already sold my other camera, so it's sort of hard to show this, but the video playback button is on a really weird spot on the camera, and the way my rig is set up. You know what? We can take off the GoPro off the rig here to sort of show. Whoa, see, look, so this is my camera rig. See, see that thing right there? There's a little play button right there, and for some reason it's there. As you can see, this GoPro has no stabilization. That's really a quite negligible. What is this here? It's just sort of a pain, and with cameras like this, you'd like to think they're completely perfect, but they're not, you know, there's still weird things that happen and such, so, you know, really nice camera. Very happy with it so far. I'm really excited to make some cool stuff with it for you guys. Tell me any good video ideas, stuff you'd like to see. Send me a tweet. Huge shout out to my Patreon people. Um, really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching Avery Nerd Time. If you sign up for Patreon, you get to watch my videos 24 hours early. Bye bye. <laughs>